Hey, Ron's foreign minister says a foreign back terrorists were behind Thursday's deadly bomb attack in the country's southeastern province of Sisan and Baluchistan. In a tweet, Mohammad Javad Zarif said that the Islamic Republic will bring to justice those responsible for this blast and their masters. Meanwhile, a spokesman for Iran's Islamic Revolution Guards Corps says the IRGC will severely punish their perpetrators and their supporters. Uh, Causing unrest usually triggers a crushing response. In addition to suffering casualties on the battlefield, the terrorists will be taken out elsewhere, and those who sent and supported them will be punished severely. Brigadier General Ramazan Sharif said that terrorists are connected to Saudi Arabia spy agencies. Now, the bombing happened in the port city of Chabahar. At least two policemen and killed, I mean, at least two policemen were killed, pardon, and over 42 others wounded, including women and children. The bomber tried to attack a police station with his car packed with explosives, but then he was forced to blow himself up before reaching that building after meeting stiff, stiff resistance from security forces. Joining us out of Ontario is Mr. Jason Unruhe, political commentator. Hello, Jason. Pleasure to have you back on the program. Your thoughts on this terror attack on Iranian soil, Jason? Well, to me, the whole timing of this seems uh, very suspicious. And the fact that this, this comes at a time when the United States is pushing sanctions against Iran. And mm -hmm. then we have this terrorist attack, uh, this group, which is highly linked to many uh, Saudi groups and has a history of being connected to the Al Nusra Front inside of Syria, which is also backed by many foreign powers, Western, uh, is, uh, Israeli, and uh, Saudi Arabian. The fact that this attack took place in a port city, and it seemed like it was attempting to uh, cause chaos or to disrupt trade. I mean, it, this almost seems like it's coming along the same lines of the U.S. strategy against Iran. Although at this time, there's no uh, proof that the United States was behind this attack. We do know that this particular group has connections to organizations which are U.S. backed. And then when we consider the evidence of where this, the, where this attack took place and what uh, U.S. foreign policy is at this time, it certainly does come off as very suspicious. And I think that's uh, one key aspect much of the media has been missing. And uh, when I mean media, I mean much of the Western media, the imperialist-controlled media, uh, many of whom who have given nothing more than five or ten second uh, references to this incident, but many of them you know, not covering them at all whatsoever because I think that it's uh, people will connect the dots on this kind of situation. Those who are open minded enough to take a look will see that this certainly has the flavor of a U.S. backed attack inside the country, although there is no real evidence of that. It does seem very suspicious in my eyes. And why is it that, you know, terror attacks like this one, like the one a few months ago in Afaz in, in southern Iran, why are they not? getting the kind of coverage that you would expect a terror attack to get in Western media. I think that, frankly, it's because Iran is not a Western country. If even the slightest incident takes place, uh, one person stabs another and one of them is uh, simply a follower of, of Islam, and even though the religion had nothing to do with the attack, it gets mainstream front page attention. Yet when you have something as blatantly terrible as this, not making the front page of Western newspapers, well, we know that is deliberately a choice made on their part. Uh, to them, this kind of thing happening in uh, their eyes and the eyes of uh, many of their viewers, this is the kind of thing that happens all, that, that they believe happens all the time over there somewhere far away and that it's not something that should be paid attention to. It's not the terrible crime against humanity it is when it happens to one of the Western countries where these kinds of things are expected not to happen. I think that shows a, a definite prejudice in much of the news coverage. And then when we combine this with the fact you know, where this attack took place, the timing of it, uh, the way it coincides with U.S. foreign policy, it, it seems like it's just not something that they would uh, want to cover because it's something that could very well be linked back 
to the United States or one of its allies in the region. If it was very clear that it had nothing to do with it, they would most likely report it as uh, much of the coverage in Syria that someone is rising up against the uh, you know, allegedly evil totalitarian Iranian government, and that's the way it would be portrayed in the media. But given the silence, I think that it's, uh, in this case, the, the silence says more than if they had actually said something. All right, Jason, thank you both for joining us and your perspective on the program. Mr. Jason Unruhe, political commentator there, joining us out of Ontario.